Pew Herr was just 17 years old when he lost both his lower legs to frostbite after getting stranded by a dangerous storm while ice climbing with a friend. Before that, he was on his way to becoming one of the best climbers in the world. Fast forward 40 years, he and his team at MIT's Media Lab, along with a top surgeon at Brigham and Women's, are looking to push prosthetics into places you cannot possibly imagine. When we have all these bionic interventions at our disposal, the individual will be able to design their own physicality, design their own cognition and emotional experience, will be able to sculpt their own identity. In that future, when we look at the normal, innate biological body, we will go, oh, so boring. Her story and his team's quest are documented in a new Nova film called Augmented, which premieres tomorrow night. Her joined me the other day to discuss. Hugh, it's really good to meet you. Thank you for your time. My pleasure. Nice so, to be here today. Thank you. You're on Mount Washington. You're 17 with a 20-year-old fellow climber. How long are you stranded on the mountain? Uh, we were stranded for nearly four, four days. Um, and we had suffered at that point severe hypothermia and frostbite and weren't able to walk. Um, so even though we made it within a few miles to civilization, uh, we, we could no longer move. And fortunately, we were discovered by a, a hiker and, and plucked from the mountain via helicopter. Before you were plucked from the mountain, though, one of the moments in the film that will always stay with me is you describe learning on the spot how hugging your climbing partner uh, was good for you because it reduced the amount of your skin that was exposed to the cold, and obviously your body's generated heat, but at some point you stopped hugging. Why did you stop? Yeah, being out there with, with my partner, Jeff Batzer, was, was critical. We could hug each other and double the the heat source, if you will, and reduce our surface area. So that really kept us alive for so many days in minus 20 to minus 30 degree Fahrenheit temperatures. At a certain point, we didn't think we could survive the ordeal. And we, we thought to ourselves, the sooner we die, the better. We were in excruciating pain and, and just, uh, you know, we had no hope. So we, we stopped hugging each other to accelerate the death process. You, know, you mentioned a second ago that you were plucked off the mountain, double amputee. You're you're told you can never climb again. How long was it till you were climbing again? I, I went climbing um, after my first week at the rehabilitation center, um, just after I was fitted with artificial limbs for the first time and took my first steps. Uh, it's funny, the first weekend I had artificial limbs, my physical therapy team didn't allow me to take the limbs home with me because they knew exactly what I would do. <laughs> and then the second weekend, they were silly enough to allow me to take my limbs. And of course, I went rock climbing. And these were as primitive as prosthetics can get. That's a fair mm, description indeed. of what they were. Or can you appreciate as the person who's in this story how, incredibly, how incredible that moment is for the viewer to see you back on the mountain with these strange looking extended prosthetics or can you not do that since you lived it <laughs> um i'm a i'm a very uh um focused uh <laughs> confident person i suppose and i just had to jump on the horse again my passion was mountain climbing and i, know I wasn't going to let leg amputations stopped me. So was there a moment, Hugh Herr, where you said, uh, I have decided that I will not allow amputation to equal disability in my, life's, my life or others? Was there a moment or was it an evolution? Yeah, when my limbs were amputated, you know, society told me your life is over, you're now a crippled. Um, and I, I suppose I'm extremely stubborn. I, I didn't accept that view. And I, I, I kind of turned the, the mirror around 180 degrees and looked at the problem from a different perspective. Most people, when they have the limb amputated within the, the void that that creates, uh, they see disability and hardship and pain and suffering. What I saw was potential. Because in that void, I could create new technologies that would augment my climbing and um, augment my 
my physicality. So I, I view it, viewed it as an opportunity to create, like a, like a great writer views a blank sheet of paper. It has potential. But one obstacle to that potential, as you describe it, Hugh Herr, was the way amputations had been done practically forever. Here's one of your colleagues from the MIT Media Lab, PhD candidate, Tyler Kleitz, talking about just that. Let's listen. For hundreds, thousands of years, amputation has been viewed as a procedure that's done when there are no other options. So we try to fix it in all these different ways, and that doesn't work. And the last thing we do is we take the leg. Um, because of that, it, it, not much scientific effort has been put into changing the way that that surgery is done. And so fundamentally, the surgery hasn't changed since really the Civil War era. Now we have all this technology. We have advanced robotic limbs. We have advanced um, ways of talking to nerves and muscles. And yet, we're still doing amputation the same way. Why did that discovery matter so much to change the way amputations were done? So our, our mission uh, at, at MIT is to link the, the nervous system to bionic prostheses for two reasons. We want a person to be able to think and move the synthetic limb. We also want the person to feel the synthetic limb as, as natural, cutaneous, or proprioceptive uh, sensations. The sense of touch, the sense of movement. Um, so even though the limb is synthetic, we want it to be perceived as a, as a flesh and bone limb. So to do that, not only do we have to architect the synthetic portions of the bionic limb, but also the biological portions. So that meant fundamentally changing how the surgery is done when the limb is amputated. You know, I don't want to gloss over what you just said a second ago. This is the part, I, I am a hyperbolic person, but there is no hyperbole here. When one watches this film and sees a human being using their thoughts to control a synthetic body part, it is, it is indescribable. How's it feel having it on? It's pretty amazing, actually. To have the foot moving in the directions that I'm thinking it's moving. It's really cool to feel it through my knee. Feels like there's a foot there. But that's exactly the point you actually get to, where it's essentially the prosthetic device becomes part of that human's body, yes? Yeah, when you ask that person, what is your body? They include the designed synthetic limb, which is extraordinary. So the, what we're doing extends beyond mere tool use. We're not developing tools. This is bionic reconstruction. We're, we're reconstructing person's bodies. Uh, which is quite, quite uh, a pivotal point in human history. You know, when you talk also, the potential uh, almost explodes off the screen. Can you envision a moment where a human being decides to voluntarily get rid of a part of their body so that they can be augmented, to use the term in the film, to have more potential, to be able to do things more things and better things? Can you imagine that moment? Uh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's, it's already occurring today that a person that has some limb condition um, chooses to have that limb amputated. Why? Because their quality of life is improved. It turns out bionic limb reconstruction can lead to higher performance, more capable um, physicality than keeping a limb that no longer functions well. No, but I meant, if I may, Hugh, a limb that is functioning normally, whatever normally means, and I know that's a word that's loaded in this film, but normally, and I say my arm is working fine, but my arm designed by Hugh Herr and his colleagues can be even finer. Is the, are we gonna reach that moment? I, I, I think we'll reach that moment. Um, we're not close to that moment now, but, uh, in the mid sections of this century, uh, uh, I, I think technology will be to the point where we can rebuild limbs uh, where they're actually augmented, going beyond innate uh, physicality. You know, we're at a time in our history where uh, a significant part of the population is finally discussing, I hope seriously, inequities in our society. 
Do you worry, and it's addressed in the film with a bioethicist there as well, do you worry about this leading to greater inequality between the haves, those who can afford this kind of augmentation, and those who cannot? I do. Um, so recently at MIT, uh, we've launched a new cent center, uh, the Yang Center for Bionics, uh, this past September. And, and part of the center mission, of course, is to expand technological capabilities in the area of bionics, but it's also to um, increase um, the, the equitable distribution of medical devices to those in the world or those regions of the world that are poorer. Um, so we, we want to think carefully about how do you more, more equitably distribute prosthetic devices to, to very poor communities. You know, uh, it, if you can put yourself where you were when you decided you'd be on this mission after your amputation, can you, would you have imagined anything like where you and your team are not, today? No, not in my wildest dreams. Um, and so I went, at, before my accident, I, I just was a terrible, terrible student. Um, I did everything possible to not go to my classes. And if you ask me what's 10% of 100, I would not be able to tell you because no one told me what a percent was or, or I wasn't listening. Um, but after the accident, again, this, this idea of designing my own artificial limbs and actually climbing better with artificial limbs than I'd achieved before the accident with biological limbs was very inspiring. And that led me to a fascination of, with math mathematics, science, and engineering which drove me back to the classroom uh, to learn uh, fundamental principles of science and then to apply those principles to the design of artificial limbs to benefit only not only myself, but others. Well, you are changing the world, you and your cololleagues. Everybody has got to watch this thing. Thanks for your work, and thanks for your time tonight, Hugh. I appreciate it. Thank you so it. much. Thank Cheers. You. you too.